So the owner of this antelope asked me to repair this little chipped off tip, uh, tip off of this uh, prong here. And um, although it's not that really big of a deal, it's not totally broken up. But anyway, he just wanted it to appear something at least kind of, kind of like close to the uh, opposite side. So it's kind of like matching. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I would do it. There's lots of different materials we can use, but uh, I'm trying to show you uh, the most accessible products that you can get your hands on. I'm gonna focus the camera closer so you can see better, and then we'll get on it. All right, the first thing I like to do is um, measuring the total length or the width of uh, this part of the uh, horns, like from back of the horn to the front, uh, front of the prongs, uh, to see what, how much are we missing out there. So if you want to bring it out to as close as possible. So we're looking at 133 millimeters. So as you can see, there is a little bit broken off, probably more on the top here that is tapering down to the tip, so it's not a lot. So what we have to do, we have to put a couple of pieces of wire in here to give it a little bit uh, strength for applying our epoxy on top of it. Okay, for that, I'd like to put probably two, maybe three. Let's see how it goes. <clears throat> I'm just going to initiate the hole for my wire. Going about half inch or three quarter on each spot. Then what I'll do, I uh, get my wire, the one that I'm very positive is going to fit properly, and I'm going to sharpen the end of it so I can still pushing it in a little bit more with, with drill, so it creates more bonding inside there before I start putting the epoxy around it. <clears throat> All right, so I cut the wire short and I sharpened one end. I'm using it inside my drill, using it as a drill bit, putting it into the initiated hole and keep drilling it in. As soon as you feel that it's going in a little bit, that's good enough. Nope, that didn't go at all. I have to try it again. It's going to be probably really hard for it to go in, but better than nothing. Good. And one more here. Good enough, and I'm using thin super glue so it really <clears throat> soaks in right along the wire that goes inside the horn, and it creates a great bonding here. I usually keep <clears throat> three different types of CA glue or super glue. I keep the thin, <clears throat> medium, and thick <clears throat> or gel. All right, so we had 133. If you don't want to use your caliper or measuring tip all the time, it's okay because you can always measure it with the stick and things are easier that way sometimes so if we kind of like hold it like that parallel to the ground hold one end of the stick to the back of your horn and the other one to the tip of the prong 
and do the same thing on this side. You will see, <coughs> sorry, from inside of it, this would be where it needs to stop. And if I had my marker with me, I would have marked my wire, but it's not. <coughs> Okay, one more time. Just measuring it like that. Okay, I go a little bit, maybe about one eighth of an inch. I go back because I don't want my wire to come right to the very tip. Cut it right here. Okay, so the angle of this shorter wire is pretty good, but this one's got too much of an angle. So I bring it down to actually right there, something like that. And I'm going to cut a little bit even shorter than the other one. This method I have repaired elk, moose, and deer antlers and tines and everything like that. So it works fairly good. Okay, now I got my wire and structure, uh, construction underneath it right now. And I look at it from the front because these prongs have a little bit of a curve into them. Make sure that you see that in your wire. I just get both of them and I slightly bend them the right direction. Okay. This one is, no, it's pretty good the way we are. And also what I like to do is just uh, wrapping some wire between these two wire, like thinner wire, just to give it more strength. And I'll be using these floral wires. So I'm probably going to use some super glue to hold it on. And we don't want to wrap too much because we want space between them. I'm just going to make the wire a little bit stationary on the wire because it's too slippery. Now it wraps much easier. All right, so good enough. And then press the wire in between the two bigger wires. So basically we are ready for epoxy. You can, if it's not that big, I mean, in this case, is really not much. It's just basically a very thin uh, amount of epoxy. Uh, I was planning to apply some Bondo to build it up first and then apply my epoxy, but it's not a very large repair. Um, I have done bigger part of the antlers that they were quite thick in diameter, and then I built up most of it over the wire with Bondo, let it set, and then shave it down a little bit to the proper shape, and then about quarter inch thickness on the top, I applied my epoxy. But I think this is small enough that I can apply the epoxy right away. So what I'm gonna use is Aves Epoxy Sculpt, and I have the brown 
and also a little bit of a dark uh, black left. So I'm gonna mix them both because this is neither that light of a brown or that dark of a black. So I'm gonna mix something and create some sort of a darker brown that is as close as possible to the base color of this uh, horn. Of course, we're gonna work on it after with airbrush and pan pastel, but uh, at least our base color is gonna be as close as possible. All right, I uh, mixed my epoxy to the best of my ability to match the color, at least for the base color. And now we just simply apply piece by piece and make sure that we're pushing it into the wire and uh, have your water bottle so you can spray it lightly because it allows you to smooth it out and sculpt it more.
right, so almost 24 hours has gone by. And this is like rock solid. And uh, to my surprise, the drier it got, uh, the, the better color it turned into. Like uh, this almost doesn't need anything. I'm afraid if I'm gonna touch it, it's just gonna get worse because it's really good. Um, it's very, very matching. Surprisingly good. And um, I'm checking the thickness and everything compared to this side. It's very close. So I don't need to do anything, I think, because what happens is, although we pre-colored our epoxy for this, but still, as soon as you start scratching it and sanding it, the color is gonna be a little bit lighter than what it is right now. And then you have to start uh, do more work on it to to bring it back into this color. But the way I have it right now, I'm really happy with it. And I'm not going to, to do more, nothing. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And even um, the thickness of it is, I thought I have it, well, you know what? The thing is, I can feel here a little bit being maybe about a millimeter and a half thicker in this part, but it's so, so small. And then another thing is that uh, even in the real animals, they, they never have 100% symmetric, never. I, it, it's never been seen or reported. Like there are some that the, the prongs on one side can get quite thicker and shorter without, th this one was broken, but if it's not broken, some of them are uh, totally different prongs on each side. So I'm just gonna leave it like that because I don't need to create more uh, work and uh, I'm sure they're gonna be super happy with this.